Why, I do love the sound of that. I have so many ideas for costumes, sets and music. The Is mayor didn't there? have time to listen to all her self-indulgent stammering and cut her off. There will be plenty of time to talk about that. I will introduce you to Mr. Borsfalo. He can sort out details. It's okay. Thomas, can I will out? have Mr. Hobbs will contact you to get Hi, you started. I highly recommend Dr. Walter from Jack Howhouse sees our savant friend, and Miss Ella will teach him. We can't afford a private instructor, Margot called out as he walked away. I will take care of it. I must go now, he responded without looking back. He stopped to talk to Ian and kept his voice low enough, so Margot and Thomas didn't hear. Call me Mr. C. Ian. He laughed out loud. Or don't. You can talk or not talk. I am not going to tell you what to do. With that, he reached it. Mood strikes you. I must keep carrying on now. As he left, Ian didn't take his eyes off Mr. C. Like Albert's boat, the 32 Fort and the street organ, it must have been beautiful once. Mr. C tried to quickly sink back into the tapestry of the city light, an earthworm avoiding the robins. He had been pecked at enough for one day. Jackie didn't require a bird's eye to sense his prey go by. Dutty RRRR. Dutty RRRR. Today the mayor suit got Dutty RRRR glanced up once to see the mayor off. Meanwhile, the librarian did all she could to not trip on herself running down the stairs. Miss Margot, were you chit chatting with Mayor Pennant? Why, yes, I was. How are you? We are dear Come friends, on. Essie. You can do it. Margot yeah. exaggerated as she continued to gush. Yes, he wants me to headline, I mean, feature in a new town says I am a butterfly, need to spread my wings. We talked about costumes and I get to employ Let's my start. own ideas and such. This is some Ian had a knack for avoiding an old drama and he parked himself in front of Patience, one of the there lion statues go. outside of the library. The two big cats had been perched on rectangular boxes in a sitting position since 1911. Mm -hmm. They were originally called Leo Astor and Leo Lennox. I guess it was somebody bright idea to make one female because for a time, they became Lady Astor and Lord Lennox. After that the mayor renamed them Patience and Fortitude as a symbol of how New Yorkers were handling the Depression. Nobody seemed to give any thought to how these kings or queens were handling the trap of eternal stillness or how the rain and snow had made green algae grow on their coats. There was never any comment on how the filthy-handed tourists were constantly slapping and mocking them while others tried to sit on their aching backs. Although their positioning was indeed majestic, no wind had ever blown through their shaggy cement locks. They were as much prisoners to the city as Albert and Jackie. Looky there. He is sitting with patience as he noted. Into the car, he glanced back at her and pulled his son in closer. Ian didn't look back. He kept walking straight forward, targeting the back seat where he often made his own little universe. You won't see tears from him. He has no remorse. No emotion. She yelled at Thomas as she cradled the tears in her hands more than she ever souped a baby of her own. Essie the librarian came and sat next to Margot. You said the mayor has a plan for him. Margot tried to rein in her aggression to appear somewhat like a good mother. Not a minute too soon, Essie. You have been lovely, helping with books and mentoring. I just fear he is a lost cause. Essie put her arm around her. Perhaps he needs a pet. A cat or a dog. They say that can mellow them out and direct their energy a bit. Margot seemed mortified by the idea. That boy with a pet? Oh, I think he would kill it outright. Did you hear what he did with the neighbor's border collie? She went on to explain how they heard incessant barking one night and found Ian in the neighbor's yard with the gate open, and the dog had been set free. They blamed Ian for attacking the dog as Miss and Margot and had made their lives miserable ever since. Upon returning from the car, Thomas stepped in at that part of the story. Nothing was conclusive, honey. If he can't speak, he can't defend himself. Give it up, Thomas, she snapped. I am so exhausted by that excuse. So, because he cannot speak, on, this means he is always presumed so innocent. Can, 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 come on. The dog was in the yard, the boy should have been in bed. At worst, he injured the poor beast. At best, he let him go. Neither one is acceptable. Margot caught herself airing too much dirty laundry and became nervous as he would see her as unstable. By teeter-tottering various roles, she aimed to impress whoever was directly in front of her and about the mayor having a plan. I see this as a positive. He has a doctor lined up and a tutor for his cello. 
We will start anew. This will all be fine. At this point, Essie felt agreeable because she wanted nothing more than to just go back to work. That is the spirit, Margot. Just take a deep breath and be excited about your new life moving forward. With that, Essie left. Thomas extended his hand out to her. Let's go home and begin packing. There is much to do. As they walked back to the car, she said, Do not ever undermine me in front of people. I could have deepened my argument by explaining the multiple incidents like taking birds from cages or strangling cats after torturing them. Thomas just looked to appease her, so they could go home. Let's just look to the future, my darling. This is our new beginning. Back at the car, Essie was speaking to Ian through the open window. Is there a problem? Hello, Albert wished to unsee most of it. At this moment, his mind was on the young savant who he presently couldn't save. Jackson. Albert's chicken scratch read. <laughs> this cramping Jackson. inside me from my backseat position's light. Watching a top spin out of control. A criminal transported, an alien deported. Is this how Alice felt falling down her rabbit hole? Or the billy goats Jackson. gruff when they came What's across the troll? Little White Cap sat between the two men and laid his head on Jackie's lap. As Jackie pet the monkey's head, he asked, So, Prince, do you really think we's gonna die here? Of course not. Everything is a stepping stone. Nobody just jumps the river, Albert assured him. What if we ain't the stream hopping or river jumping type Jackie left? Albert thought about that. I think I shall bring you down. That is enough writing for one day, my colorful clown. Will you dance for me? I will play. After all, I am far too old to be laying on cement. <laughs> Named it thrice. New York, New York and the Haven of Mice. They scurry from holes once the sun kicks them out. In search of some water in the middle of drought. Stool pigeons laugh at their gobble pipe jokes. While not 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 high-pitched canaries spit hard-boiled yolks. They call Jackie blind, call him colored and round. I refer to this mime as my colorful clown. An awkward dead hoofer, the gallery destroys. But me, they just beg me to stop all my noise. Albert was far too old to be laying on cement. Each bone was punching through, trying to escape his embattled WW1 overcoat to fight its next battle with the hot pavement below. Even though the wool melton cloth was begging him for an honorable discharge from active duty, I think it was beautiful once. Perhaps it was even revered by thousands of British soldiers. He had to have hung it on a special hanger every night in a tightly guarded wardrobe near his shiny black boots. If you could get past the them. dust on it, there seemed to be picture. rows and rows of awards <laughs> covering most of the space. It appeared his silver, shoulder-length hair had never been combed, and it had to have been at least 20 years.